Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, March 11th, 2024. What's going on? How are you? <clears throat> How are you? Oh, Billy, no smoke. Oh, smokeless fucking tobacco, fucking ginger face, freckled, bald cunt over here. Ten days of just hacking up. I got the last little bit here. I'm actually thinking st- part of it is like I, I have uh, milk in my coffee. A little sugar in your coffee there. Um, maybe that's part of it. Maybe I should lay off that. Just go to some espressos. S, not X, espresso. All right. And it's also et cetera, E-T, not et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of weird shit out there, people, you know, that you've just been saying wrong forever. Like, I still, I say, I say, uh, I, I've talked about this before. I say nuclear instead of nuclear. Nuclear device. Oh, geez, like fucking Oppenheimer. I'm finally watching that movie, man. Good Lord. I got to be honest with you, man. Watching that movie, the fucking amount of work that it must have been putting that thing together on all levels. I'm halfway through the movie. Um, Great movie to watch on the road Um, when you get away from your kids and everything and you got time. Like the sheer amount of scenes, the costumes, the sets, the writing, back and forth, all of that footage. Um, I'm about an hour and a half in it. It's an absolute uh, masterpiece and, uh, oh, my God, Robert Downey Jr. Jesus. Jesus. Just when you thought Iron Man was the peak there. Uh, <laughs> that fucking guy. I, first of all, I didn't even know it was him for, like, the first, like, three scenes. That's when somebody is, I think, just crushing it. When they, they're so in it, you don't even recognize them. Um, and it actually made me believe in Clark Kent, because I always think to think like, really, you just put on a pair of glasses and nobody knows that you're the Cape Crusader? Is that who you No, Man of Steel? You don't know that he's Superman? It really is amazing how super just somehow has just gone generations and generations and all that, all the other like sayings. The only hang around for a minute but somehow superman super bowl but nobody says it like hey you want to go out and get a cup of coffee oh that would be super like pe- someone would just be doing it just mocking the word but for some reason you just don't question it superman the super bowl anyways i used to always think clark kent had like the fucking laziest like that serial killer trying to get caught like he just puts on a pair of fucking hipster glasses and parts his hair the other way. And you know, who who are you? Who's this guy? Who's this fucking jacked journalist? I'm totally buying this shit, right? And I used to always make fun of that. Now, having seen Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> with glasses on, and he combed his hair the different way, and I had no idea it was him, I now believe in Clark Kent. That's how good Robert Downey Jr. is in Oppenheimer. He made me believe in uh, Superman's alter ego. Um, I love how they always have like an alter ego like that really is sort of a nod to like mental illness which by the way I was I'm here in Detroit right now um, with Nate Craig who's another one like I always know when I'm about to lose an opener they just start killing at a level where I'm like like this I'm just yeah, I'm just holding you back at this. Why would you go around? You should be doing your own fucking thing at this point. That's where Nate is. That's where Dean Del Rey is. That's where Bartnick was a year ago. Now he's off headline, and I just, they're all, they're all leaving the nest. Um, but I'm also happy about that, too, because I don't want to have a terminal opener. There's nothing sadder than that, that they're, they're just going to be, they're just settled in. They're going to open for their whole career. I always just, I always look at comics that I see starting to go down that road. And I'm like, what are you going to do if the person you're opening for just drops dead or quits or back in the day, got a movie career or a TV show going? No one in the clubs, all they've all changed. The bookers have changed. 
And now you're going to be like 50 years old calling up a place you used to work trying to get it, get it going again. I don't know. It's terrifying. Um, anyway, what the hell was I going to be? I was going to talk about was, uh, oh, I'm in Detroit right now. So I'm with Nate Craig, right? And we're trying to find a good place. So I just look up best coffee near me and it says Lucky's coffee shop or something here in Detroit. And it was like 1.2 miles away. You know, Detroit, I, you know, it's really coming back. But I've been going to Detroit since the late 90s. So even during the day, I'm like, do we want to walk 1.2 miles into the abyss? And I don't know what neighborhood I'm walking into. I, so I say to Nate, I go, do you want to take an Uber? And he goes, no, I want to walk. And I just go, I want to walk, walk. And we just started singing Twisted Sister. And we went, <laughs> we went out. And it was just walking into the wind. And it just took me back to when I was a kid. I was a walker. You know, there was kids that took the bus. We actually just qualified to be on the bus, but we chose to walk because my best friend lived about a quarter mile up the street and we would always meet him. And uh, it was like blowing so hard because we're right off of Lake Erie, one of the Great Lakes. You know, Canada only has the great one. We have the five Great Lakes and they are ours. I know that the property line goes through the middle, but let's be honest. If we really wanted to throw down with Canada and just say, listen, Okay, I don't want to start anything here, but we're taking the lakes. What what would they do? You know, I mean, Canada can't even win a fucking Stanley Cup. You think they're going to win a war? Oh, God, I just felt everyone in Canada go, what the fuck, Bill? Fucking low blow. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm fucking with you. All right. I've been to Canada. I've seen your war memorials. I know what you've done to contribute to fight against fascism. Um is there any way Canada could rise up again against against our two presidential candidates? <laughs> I refuse to fucking watch this. I'm just I am not watching it. I am not watching it the same way when I used to walk in and my my wife was be watching Sex in the City. I am like I am not watching this shit. I cannot watch these beautiful women delivering. Punchlines written by 60-year-old gay guys in the 90s. I just, I just, whenever she puts, I told you, whenever she puts that show on, anytime a joke is delivered, I, it, you can always tag it with, oh, honey. <laughs> and it always works. Um, anyways, it was like, you know, you know, like clever comedy. It doesn't make you laugh. It makes your eyebrows go up like, eh. just it's that mixed with a snap from 12 to six. That that's the jokes on that show. Um, innuendo. Um, it's funny. I'm in a hotel. I bet somebody just walked right by my hotel door and heard me sing innuendo. Um, anyway, so we start walking up the street and the wind was blowing and it just took me back to when I was a kid walking to school. And, you know, Nate's from Wisconsin. I was like, Nate, were you a walker? He goes, yeah. He goes, I missed the bus a lot, so I'd walk two miles to school. I go, do you remember this move? And it was the turning around and walking backwards into the wind. Um, there was that. There was nostril. Remember nostril freezing weather? You'd have to start breathing in through. You know, if you breathe, breathe in through your nose, your nostrils would, like, stick for half a second. <laughs> All this is going to go away with global warming. It's just not going to be a thing anymore. Um, although probably walking backwards into the wind once all these big corporations, you know, cut down all the mountains or something. Who knows? But let's not go dark. We're not. So we're walking. We want to walk, walk uh, up to Lucky's. And we start going up the hill. And all of a sudden, Nate's going, uh, are those drums? Am I hearing drums? I'm like, well, it's Detroit. Drums are gunshots. I don't know what that is, right? And we get up there and there's a parade. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? A parade? Okay. And I see the police and firemen. I go, all right, is this like a uh, first responders? First responders? I, they, I don't think there's any phrase in the world I, that fucking drives me up the wall like that. First responders. That's literally a religious level of guilt. You know? They respond first. Well, you sit on your ass, you ununiformed piece of shit. Like, that's just how I take it. I might be defensive, okay? I, I'll take 40%, but no more than that. 
Um, so I thought it was a first responder. <laughs> you mean doing your job? Stop acting like we all sat around like a bunch of cowards. They call you and you show up. That's your job. Fucking lady down the Starbucks is a first responder. I walk in. Hey, can I help you? I don't see her halftime. We had a fucking NFL game and we all got to stand up and thank her for her service. Um, anyway, so we get up there and it turns out it's everybody's dressed up like fucking leprechauns in those dumb green hats and green and orange beards, you know. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? It's, it's March 10th. And I found out that they celebrate St. Patrick's Day a week earlier in Detroit because so many people go to Chicago for the big one when they paint the river green and all of that. Like, you know, what's funny about a St. Uh, St. Patrick's Day parade now is we are so like mixed at this point just from generations of just banging each other that nobody looks Irish. I was like walking through the parade. I'm like, nobody here looks Irish. Nobody. I don't like. And there was a couple of old guys like, there's one. There, <laughs> there's one. But it was awesome. So we were walking up the street and we just kind of impromptu ended up getting to see a parade. There was all these great bands. Um, there was this cool old truck and they had like, you know, the, the wacky old siren and they were doing a skit. For some reason, some people had. Uh, would do it where it were dressed like leprechauns with the Ghostbusters song going on. And they just kept playing, Bustin makes me feel so good. And I'm like, is that a remix? And he said, no, but he always said that. And I go, does he mean like Bustin and Nut? And he said, well, no, but they, they kind of meant that. You know, it meant like Bustin the Ghost or whatever. I don't know, but you know what they mean, right? A little innuendo there. So we go up there. <clears throat> We've, we're so watching the parade, we walk past Lucky's like, for like a block and a half. I'm like, wait a minute, where the hell's Michigan Avenue? Whatever, we come back and we went in there. Absolutely outstanding cup of coffee if you're ever in Detroit, Lucky's. And then upstairs, they have this old school barbershop. Um, I give the place five out of five stars and the staff was super friendly and really nice to us. Um, and then we came back out and we walked back down. I got some Detroit style pizza. I got the little four inch Four slice one, split that with Nate. Then I went over to Shinola, which I always end up spending money over there. And uh, then we found this other coffee place. I'm like, dude, we got to go in there. It just looks, I remember when that place was vacant. Like, there's a lot of these, like this whole area that I'm staying in. Like, I remember when this, this place was like, you'd just be looking at the shell of the building going like, that is a beautiful building. I wish somebody would redo it. Well, guess what? They are redoing it. And if you're looking to invest money, I would say Detroit is a great place to be because I've seen Cleveland and Pittsburgh and maybe even Baltimore sort of right here, right where they're at right now before they fucking, you know, before it explodes and all the corporate cunts come in and they just start building glass towers for luxury, high rise, you know, rentals. And people from around the world are like fucking washing their money and they never even stay in them. <laughs> you know, if I was president, these are two things that I would do. If I was president, I would legalize the happy ending at the end of a massage. Tell me I'm not getting elected. And then I would also, I would, uh, you can't be from another country and just buy a fucking apartment. And not live in it because it kills all the businesses around you because there was somebody living there. And now there isn't or there was a building there and they knocked it down. It was like, fuck this. You know, you got to invest in this this uh, this country. And I think that that needs to come back. I think that needs to come back a little, uh, you know, American patriotism that isn't wrapped in racism. Make it great again. I tell it like it is. Here comes the N word fucking stupid white people thing. I'm not talking about that. I mean, like all the regular people. Like last night, I come to this fucking hotel. It's a really nice hotel. All they got's the late night menu. Old Billy Protein staying away from the carbs, getting his bikini body ready for the fucking summer, right? 
<laughs> Sorry for that visual. <laughs> that even made me wince. I really apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> I ordered some fucking chicken wings. And yes, I do get it with ranch. I hate blue cheese. Blue cheese is fucking gross. It's like somebody busted a nut into some fucking cheese. I fucking hate blue cheese. It's just, it's just, it's, it's too much. It's fucking too much. It's like your buddy who doesn't know when to stop. You know what I mean? He just has too many drinks and then starts saying inappropriate shit. And then he's bumping into people. And, you know, there's always some table that's going to get broken when he's around, right? So I fucking, <clears throat> I call up. Ah, oh, Jesus, hang on. I got to fucking, I got to hack this up. It's the only way I'm going to get it out, people. I apologize. I'm in the bathroom now. Wait a second. I'm not going to make you listen to this. I'm going to hit pause. All right, that was gross. Um, anyway. Uh, so I order the, the wings and then all of a sudden, like they go, all right, it's gonna be a half hour. I'm like, cool. Right. 20 minutes later, my phone's ringing. And I thought it just meant there was somebody outside, like the doorbell and it rings the phone or some weird shit. <clears throat> so I go to the door and, um, so I go to the door and uh, yeah, I did hack up again. It's gotta be the fucking milk and the coffee because I wasn't hacking at all. I haven't been smoking. This is, I'm like a doctor right now that doesn't have a fucking medical degree, also known as a podcaster, which is what you're listening to. <laughs> Yesterday's doctors are today's podcasters. Oh, well, it's interesting. There's an echo in this room. Um, I sound like Dean Martin in here, right? Volari. Whoa. So... I don't answer the phone. I go to the door and there's nobody there. I'm like, oh, it is my phone ring. And I pick it up. And uh, there's no, you know, I missed it. So I'm like, oh, whatever. It's probably somebody fucking drunk calling the wrong room or something. So uh, then another 10 minutes goes by and the fucking phone rings again. <clears throat> so I'm like, all right, pick up the phone this time. They say, hey, uh, you know, we, we uh, unfortunately, uh, they sent the cook home. No one can make you chicken wings, you buffalo wings. And I just said to the lady, rather than get upset about it, and they would give you a voucher for breakfast. I, I, I don't need a voucher. I go, I go, isn't it ridiculous, like, the level of skeleton crew that they run at a hotel now? Like, how few people that they have to try to run the whole thing? Like, how much money do they need to make, you know? And I know you're being grossly underpaid. <laughs> I've just decided what I'm going to do is bond with the worker. Because I know that that woman every night gets yelled at like it's her fucking decision. <clears throat> you know? It's like when they overbook a fucking flight and people yell at the person at the ticket counter. It wasn't, it wasn't their decision. Try that next time rather than yelling at them. Going like, isn't it crazy that they do this on purpose and then everybody starts yelling at you? You know? I want to thank you for, uh, you know, whatever the hell. They should bring those people out. Halftime. Halftime at a fucking football game or before the game. And rather than standing up and applauding, we all apologize. <laughs> Hang your heads in shame. Rather than a moment of silence, you know, you hang your head in shame. And then they only, whatever, they hook her up or him up with some bullshit. Some gift bag, whatever the fucking... All right, it's time for the game. Bread and circus, here we go. So, um, completely lost my train of thought. What the fuck was that? Oh, yeah. Corporations or whatever, right? Is that what I was talking about? I don't know what. All I know is... Uh, oh, I know. As far as, like, <clears throat> you know, investing back in America, I went to uh, Gary, Indiana. And the amount of people that said, why are you going to Gary, Indiana? Like, why would you go there? And it's like, why wouldn't I go there? Those people don't deserve a show just because the steel mill fucking left and everything's all fucked up there. Well, I, I just don't understand that. It's like, they deserve a show too. You know? <laughs> and I'll tell you this, they're going to be beyond psyched that you show up. I'll tell you what's fucking overrated is just going to the same cities that fucking, you know, you know, I was in Indianapolis. People are like, why did, why did you go to Gary? And it's like, you're in Indianapolis. Fucking U2 comes here. You don't need me to come here. U2 doesn't go to Gary. 
at least they can have some bald cunt come in there once every once in a while and tell some shit jokes. Can they at least get that? They can't get superstar rock stars. Can they get a fucking transparent middle-aged white guy selling his wares? Um, I had such a good time in, uh, in, in the Gary, Indiana. We landed. We went by the Jackson family house where all nine of them lived um, in Gary, that famous house, and it's on Jackson Street. And I assumed that they named the street after them, and they didn't. It just was a coincidence that they, they as the Jackson family, lived on Jackson Street. <clears throat> I don't know if that was foreshadowing the, the greatness that was going to come from there, but, you know, it was like... Uh, I can't even compare it to Graceland because it'd be like seeing the house that Elvis grew up in. I wonder if they still have that. I have no idea, but whatever. Um, and uh, what else did I see when I was there? I saw the old Paramount Theater. I saw a few things when I was there. Unfortunately, it was raining and we got there late at night, so I couldn't see much of it, but um, I don't know. I saw this thing where comedian Mike Epps went back to his hometown and bought up a whole block and fixed it up. And, you know, and is any fucking politician going to give him the uh, award that he deserves? And I just don't mean locally. Like for somebody to do that, we need, you know, more people to do that. Well, fucking why don't you go do it, Bill? That's a good goddamn question. (laughs) I'm going to fucking... I don't know. I don't know how much money you need to buy up a whole fucking block. But it was it made me feel so great when I saw that. And I've always liked Mike Epps. And he's like one of those guys like, um, you know, when they talk about, uh, you know, people you don't want to have to go on. You know, they always have the list. Oh, who's the greatest? Blah, 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 blah. There's a different list when it comes to because a lot of times when they say who's the greatest. It's also like. That had, a lot of that has to do with, like, that the industry can make money off of them, too. You know what I mean? Like, you have to, like, be selling a certain amount of tickets and going to Hollywood, having projects made, and they're making, like, the suits are making money off of you to then, like, get on that list. And then, but, like, the overall, you know what I mean? Like, is a different list. <laughs> and I'll just say, like, as a comedian, like, if I had a list of people, like, that I don't want to go on, like, it's going to differ from the list that they're always putting out, those other who's the best or whatever. And uh, right at the top, of the, Mike Epps would not want to have to go on after that guy. So not only do I respect him like that as a comedian <clears throat> and as an actor and all of that, but, like, the fact that he would go back to his hometown and do what he did also shows that he's a great man. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Isn't that a better story than fucking watching CNN and Fox News, who I swear to God, I am really starting to become convinced that they're owned by the same person. And they're just acting like it's Ted Turner and that other guy, Ralph Malf, whatever his fucking name is. I always forget the guy's name. Rupert Murdoch, right? Um, like they have opposing fucking views. I think the whole thing is just fucking designed. It's it's just too convenient. And uh, it's, it's, I don't know. I think that's one of the major things. You stop watching those, get people stop watching those channels and get kids to stop looking at fucking screens and legalize the happy ending after a massage. And I mean, you know, when we start investing in cities, I mean, imagine if you just ran on that platform. How soon would they label you a communist, an anti-Semite, a socialist, say that you went to Epstein Island? I mean, they would just fucking just tar and feather you (laughs) before you even got going. Um, Let's go. Let's go positive here, man. Um, Shinola, one of my favorite fucking companies out there. Shout out to them. I bought one of their watches. They have the sickest fucking, you know, you know, like those strips that you buy. Um. 
you know, to plug a bunch of shit into. If you want one that just looks a little nicer, it's more expensive. I'm not going to lie to you. But they got a couple, man. They got one that's got like three and then one that has six. And then it has like the things where if you don't have like the square plug in thing, you can just stick it right in. They come in all these different cool colors uh, and it's high quality shit. Um, bags, bicycles and all that. And all American made right here in Detroit. You know, so I always go in and I try to buy something. Got something for my uh, my daughter. I got her one of those desk clocks, and it's the old school one. And she can actually tell time on the old school one. She's also learning scriptive. Like, all of that, like, you know, I'm going to teach her how to drive a stick. There's a few things, you know, old school things, you know, that you need to know. All right? I think all of that and a little bit of ACDC, you know, climb a tree. And I, I think you're, you're on the right road. <laughs> <laughs> but I just might might be this fucking old guy. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, so tonight is Detroit, which I'm really looking forward to, and that'll be the end of this run. And then I'm off for a week, and then I do like a run of dates. I think I'm at the Fox Theater or something like that in St. Louis. Uh, really looking forward to just being in the same city, another great city with great people, you know? Um, if you guys got some good food spots, coffee spots or any of that shit, let me know. Tweet me or whatever the fuck you're supposed to say. Um, right into the podcast. Um, and, uh, I think that's it. Oh, tonight's the Oscars. It's the biggest night in show business, people, where all the stars come out. What are you wearing? Um, I would say this is one of the strongest years for movies I've seen in a long, long time. That's probably because I watched most of them, but um, some of the movies that I saw, Oppenheimer, obviously, um, Killers of the Flower Moon, Anatomy of a Fall. Fuck. The writing in that. Jesus Christ. Was that fucking, like, amazing and then someone who's written some scripts it was like humbling like oh my god like do i actually think i'm good at this like this is this is a fucking masterpiece and uh american fiction was another great one and then barbie barbie was the, sh the how that movie looks is the shit it's like alice in wonderland level set you know what i mean if you're too afraid to take mushrooms you just kind of want to go on this fucking beyond the message of the movie if you're just fucking watching it it's pretty wild. I mean, it takes me back to when I was a kid watching like the banana splits and uh, far out space nuts and everything was just like super fucking vivid colors, orange and like really like it was funny because like Hollywood knew that all these kids were doing drugs and they don't give a shit. They're just like, well, let's make it look like you're on drugs so we can still make money off of them. <laughs> That's how my business pivots. They don't they don't try to help things out. They just try to like, all right, is that, is that what you guys are doing? All right, <laughs> let's just make some shit that makes you feel like you're doing that. Um, anyway, but I'm, I'm about, like I said, I'm halfway through Oppenheimer and uh, the performances in it, like, it's just, it's, it's really, really, you know, it's every reason why they make movies. So we'll see. Um, I meant to get through, the, I think there was like 10 nominees for Best Picture. So I got through six of them, which is pretty fucking, I usually only see one or two with the kids and doing the road, but I really tried this year because I wanted, you know, I'm such an idiot. I was like, I'm going to stay home and I'm going to watch the Oscars with my wife and actually kind of know what's going on. It could be a really nice night. And for once I won't be interrupting because I will be, invested in this because I actually know what the fuck they're talking about. And of course, I'm on the road. And you blew it. Um, all right, let's do some reads here for this week. Some reads. Oh, in Indianapolis, I got to give a shout out to Pat McAfee and his show for helping me sell some tickets out there. And uh, him and his lovely wife, Samantha, came back. Um, just fucking great, great people. Salt of the earth. Uh, he is exactly... Like he is on this show, just fucking hilarious, uh, 
you know, joking around, big hearted, great guy, just great guy. His wife's a sweetheart, just fucking really great people. So thank you so much to them for coming out to the show and having me on the show and uh, give me some great business advice, too. You know, telling you a couple of smart cookies there. Um, So thank you to them and thank you to everybody that came out in Gary, Indiana, Indianapolis and now Detroit. All right. That's it. Okay, plowing ahead. Uh, Simply safe, everybody. Simply safe. Uh, Did you know? Did you know that according to the FBI property crime data, most home break ins happen in broad daylight? I mean, that's fucking balls. And the days get longer this spring. Protect your home with Simply Safe. It's the award winning home security uh, I use and recommend. Both, yeah, I don't leave the house without turning that shit on. Both experts and customers love Simply Safe for its comprehensive protection. It was just named Best Home Security System of 2024 by U.S. News and World Report and recognized for the best customer service in home security by Newsweek. Uh, in advance, to, you know what? There's a way, you know, if you can't afford a home security system, you know, that's what's great about having your parents being older. You don't put them in a home. You just stick them in your house. So there's always somebody home. You give them a fucking shotgun. All right. All right, Nana. I'm going out. It's time you sit in the door chair. (laughs) Okay. You know, put on some of those Vic Firth fucking uh, noise-canceling headphones. Oh, Jesus. And then you come through the door and her eyes are bad and she fucking shoots. All right, just get simply safe before you get shot by your mom. Uh, It's advanced technology protects every room, window, and door of your home while cameras keep watch for suspicious activity 24-7. The system is backed by 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day, and there's no long-term contract ever. You'll get the emergency response you need and at half the cost of traditional home security. With 24-7 lifeguard protection and the smart alarm indoor camera, agents can actually talk two intruders in real time, scaring them off. I got to see footage of that. Um, You install the system your way. It's easy to do it yourself or get their professionals to do it for you. You can test it out with absolutely no risk to you with Simply Safe 60 day risk free trial. Don't love your system? Return it for a full refund. Protect your home today. My listeners get 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. Getting the hiccups here. Just visit. S-I-M-P-L-I-S-A-F-E dot com, com, hiccup, dot com slash burr. It's simply safe dot com slash burr. This is how much of a Guns N' Roses song, uh, fan, song, how much of a Guns N' Roses fan I am when I, they wrote out slash and I was thinking like, oh my God, is slash advertising on my podcast? Simply safe dot com slash burr. There's no safe like simply safe. Here's one for you. You know all those people in Florida that are always buying those endangered species? You know, like tigers and shit like that. I mean, that's another way to go. You know, when you go, when you leave your house to go down the street to go buy some bait and tobacco, whatever the fuck it is you do in Florida, you just let your tiger walk around your house. (laughs) Not only does it stop the intruder, it eats up all the evidence. You know what? Next thing you know, you got a new sh- new pair of flip flops. All right, Helix Sleep, everybody. Helix, it's Helix Sleep. You know the Helix lineup offers twenty unique mattresses, including the award winning Lux Collection, the newly released Helix Elite Collection, a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers. And even a mattress made just for kids, big and tall sleepers. They call that the Houston Special. <laughs> I will never stop teasing Houston for winning fattest city in the fucking country two years in a row. Now, there's a dynasty, Kansas City Chiefs fans. Um, Two years is the fattest city is a dynasty. You don't have to have three. I'll tell you why. Because so many people die between championships. Um, So many big players. Um, So how... How will you know which Helix mattress works best for you and your body? Take the Helix Sleep Quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. They offer a 100-night trial and a 10 to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. Gross. Models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body. (laughs) 
Oh, does your husband not spoon you after sex? Well, you got to have the responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in stomach, back, and emotional sleeping positions. I might have doctored some of that copy. Plus, enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. Are you stealing from your company and wake up with fucking cold sweats? Hot sweats. Um, plus, Helix mattresses are an American made. America! Fuck yeah. And come with a 10 to 15 year warranty depending on the model. Don't want to take my word for it. Uh, Helix has been offered, the, been awarded the number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired magazine. It's even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving sleep. Helix is, offered 20, is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash burn. Use the code uh, HELIXPARTNER20. H-E-L-I-X-P-A-R-T-N-E-R-2-0. Uh, this is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. All right, who do we got here? Oh, my God, it's hymns. You know why I say it that way? I'm doing the Warriors. It wasn't us. It was them, the Warriors. Uh, hymns, uh, real talk. I swear to God, they wrote that. Real talk. Real talk, yo. Oh, Billy, appropriation here. 52% of men over 40, ex over 40 experience some form of erectile dysfunction uh, between the ages of 40 and 70. Oh, my God. Is there anything worse than when your dick leaves you hanging? You know? It's just fucking staring at the ground, moping around. You want to, be, you want to talk to your dick and be like, dude, this isn't about you. This is about us. And what's across from us, all right? So get your fucking head in the game. Um, it's one of those moments where if your, disc, if your dick was wearing a helmet, you'd grab it by the face mask. Give it a fucking head slap. Look, it all works. All the innuendo works here. But it's always been a taboo topic. Thankfully, uh, well, I think a dry pussy is also taboo. I don't hear women talking about that either, right? Maybe Hymns can expand their, their brand. Thankfully, Hymns is changing that by providing affordable access to erectile dysfunction treatment all online. You're, com you're confident in the office. What? You're confident in the office, at the dinner table, and even on the dance floor. I don't even know what that means. But you can keep it going when you get... Oh, you're confident in the office, at the dinner table, and even on the dance floor. Look at me. I'm fucking dead shit. Um, but you can't keep it going when you get to the bedroom. With hymns, you can get access to medication to ensure your erectile dysfunction gets treated. So you can keep your confidence going all day and all night, ladies. Hymns is changing men's health care by providing access to affordable and discreet Sexual health treatments, all from the comfort of your couch. Hymns. Ah, fucking cunt. Why the fuck does it go all the way up like that? I didn't scroll up. Where the hell was I? It just did it again. This is Helix mattresses. Fucking something else. Hymns. Where the hell is it? Process is simple. This is some long-ass copy, by the way. Hims is changing men's health care. All right, <clears throat> I already did that. Provides access to clinically proven generic alternatives to uh, Viagra and Cialis up to 95% cheaper with options as low as 2% per dose. And what else here? Um, the process is simple and 100% online. No uncomfortable doc doctor visits. We fucking get it. Jesus Christ, where do we go? No insurance is needed. Pay one low price for your treatments online. Visits on... Going shipments and provider messaging. Hims has hundreds of thousands of trusted fucking everybody's great. Their dick's working now. Start your free online visit at hims.com slash burr. That's H I M S D O T dot com slash burr for your personalized erectile dysfunction treatment option. Hims.com slash burr. Oh, here's the disclaimer. Uh, prescriptions require online consultation with a health care provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See websites for details and important safety information. Subscriptions required. Prices vary based on product and subscriptions plan. Um, all right. <clears throat> we are now into the, uh, the questions for the week. Oh, Billy Yoga Matt. Billy Yoga Matt. I'm going to tell you this right now. Oh, Billy, oh, Billy Backbend. Billy Backbend. I can get three quarters of the way up. 
three quarters of the way up. And if you're like me and you could, you like you were the level of like, you know, those Japanese houses they have and you come in, you, you kick your shoes off and then you sit down, you know, like that's that's where my back bend was about two months ago. And I've been just trying. No, I'd say six months ago. It's, it's taken me a while. I'm not going to lie. It's been like six months and it's all your so as of just sitting down in rental cars, flying across the country, sitting on your ass watching games and not stretching it out. I thought it was my back. I was just like, dude, my back just doesn't bend that way. I didn't realize it was it was the hip flexes and my psoas and all of that. Um, anyway, uh, hey, Billy Barbie baby. <laughs> How are you? So my girlfriend is into yoga, and as a result, so am I. She actually opened her own yoga studio. Uh, don't worry, it's not a hot yoga studio. It doesn't get sweaty, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, Jesus. Like the fucking level of mopping, and they just... They just don't mop up between classes. It's so fucking nasty. Nasty. Um, they don't mop up enough. You know what I mean? You walk in there and you're just walking on the floor and you have to be in your fucking bare feet. I swear to God. I mean, the amount of people that must get like fucking athlete's foot and planter's wart in, in those things. Um, and the instructors, like their feet are just immune to it. They're always walking around in their bare feet. I don't know how they do it. So anyways, the person says, in fact, next time you're in Toronto, you should come take a class on the, on the house. It's room temperature and it's fucking great. I remember when I was in my early 20s, I would 100% do that. I had an uncle who suggested I do it and I thought he was a Mary. Oh, especially as a Canadian. You guys are all hockey players pulling your own teeth out between shifts. Oh, I think we should stitch that up. Oh, I think I'm okay. <laughs> You guys are maniacs. I don't think you're going to be playing, uh, doing yoga. Uh, anyway, now that I'm in my late 30s, I finally realized it's awesome for two things. Uh, the stretching and the great A. Great asses, he says, Al Pacino voices. Bill, do not say my name on this podcast because I can't have this get to my girl as, I, as I'm as i whoring out her yoga studio. Well, dude, you said Toronto. How many chicks? Do you, uh, you should have done. You shouldn't have named the city either. Anyhow, I hope you're doing well. I love the podcast and all your specials. Take care and go F yourself. Toodaloo, Billy Boo. I literally might have my, I'm going to have my guy fucking Andrew bleep out the city. All right. He was nice enough to write in. I don't need to get this guy in trouble. Okay. Nicotine withdrawals. Oh, you guys are just fucking... Just hit not everything that I'm, I'm talking about this year. Uh, I'm going through. I love this. This is all about me. This is feeding my narcissism. Nicotine withdrawals. Hey, old Billy Stogie. Longtime listener, first time writer. I know you always blah, 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 blah. Uh, when fans are kissing your ass in the reads. But thank you for all your laughs. No worries. I'm 33 years old and I've been a fan of yours for over 20 years now. That's crazy. You were 13 when you started listening to me? Holy vey, I'm fucking old. And I'm still 23 years older than you. 22. Um, all right, I've been a fan over 20 years and I've pretty much never missed a podcast in 12 plus years and I've seen all your specials at least twice. During some of the darkest moments of my life, divorce, death of loved one, immense stress from work. It's a, dude, you've lived a lot of life in 33 years. You always make me laugh. Um, so for real, thank you. You can add levity to any situation. Oh, that's very nice of you. I appreciate that. Uh, anyways, on February 29th's podcast, you mentioned you were going through a period where anger is pouring out of you and you don't have no idea why. Uh, now that I'm a doctor, not that I'm a doctor. You wrote now. Oh, now I'm not a doctor. Um, but I have... I've been a nicotine addict since I started smoking cigarettes at 14. This isn't some AA shit where I'm trying to tell you you're just like me, man. Just saying, I obviously don't know your personality, but you're always talking about cigars on the podcast. You might have crossed that threshold into physical addiction to nicotine. Oh, 100%. 100%. And where, where does it go? It scrolls the fuck back up again on my thing. I don't, I don't even know how I'm doing this. It's like, I feel, I feel like a wizard. Um, nicotine addiction isn't quite the destructive monster alcohol or narcotic addiction can be. 
besides the inevitable cancer if you're smoking it. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's like one of those things where you can just still be a great dad and you don't miss birthdays if all you're doing is smoking, but uh, you miss a lot of birthdays by dying earlier. <laughs> Anyways, but it does turn out people into irritable cunts who are angry for no reason when they're not getting their nicotine. Uh, you might be just putting yourself in and out of withdrawal all the time. Uh, oh, my God, I did it again. I think I just realized how I'm doing this. If you put your finger on the screen and sort of roll your finger to the right, instead of scrolling up, it makes it go up to the top. Um, okay, so I'm basically putting myself in and out of uh, nicotine withdrawals all the time with the way you on again and off again smoke a bunch of cigars. Uh, you've been chipping and you finally snap it, snapped it. Happens to literally every smoker eventually. You're still getting lots of nicotine in through your gums, even if you don't inhale the smoke. I quit smoking three and a half years ago. Congratulations. And chew two milligrams of nicotine gum all the time instead. Dentists say it won't fuck my teeth up as long as there's no sugar in the gum. Maybe one day I'll six. Be, I'll successfully be nicotine free, but every time I try to stop the gum, I get real irritable and tempted to go buy cigarettes. So I just stick with the gum. Way better alternative than smoking. The gym and nicotine gum are your friend to battle this shit. Well, that's some really nice advice. Uh, maybe talk to your doctor about nicotine gum or any NRT, nicotine replacement therapy. Thanks again for all the laughs and go fuck yourself. Um, I'm a cold turkey person and I have to go through all the emotions and the anger and all that shit. I appreciate it, but like, um, I'm 10 days into the month. So now that's all I need. Now I can just kind of, I just wish I could hack up this last little bit. So I'm reading about drinking different teas, um, you know, while inhaling steam and shit like this to try to get rid of this last little bit. But I'm really starting to think that some of it, I don't know, just too much dairy. Cause I, you know, before I started drinking fucking coffee, I just keep picking one stupid habit after another to replace booze. That's basically what I'm doing. Um, and then, then I overdo that. So maybe, maybe that's what it is. I think I'm going to go uh, espressos the next few days and just see what that does. Um, or maybe limit myself to one cappuccino like I was doing the beginning of the year before I went up. Now I'm up to two, occasionally three, but for the most part, 90% of the days, I just do two. I can't do three because then I just get fucking crazy. Like I had three the other day and I sat down to play drums and I couldn't even control my bass drum foot because my fucking legs were shaking. Um, I couldn't understand why I was playing so bad. Um, all right, good journalism. Um, thank you for that advice, by the way. All right, good journalism. Moving on to the next one here. Good journalism. I think the best way... Oh, I was trying to find, like, journalism that wasn't, like, biased CNN, Fox News horseshit. Uh, where are they? This person says, I think the best way to seek it out, uh, the same way you have to seek out good friends and a happy life or good music or anything like that, I would think, um, is if you take what's handed to you, you're probably just a sucker. If they're on television, they're certainly not period. There's nothing after that. Uh, it's just show after show, useless information that doesn't, that does nothing to solve a problem. Absolutely. It's incredible how retired generals who now sit on the board of weapons manufacturers are the ones who are influencing public sentiments on war. The anti-war left and the anti-interventionalist right are dead and gone. Uh, recently, there was a chemical found in 100% of products, including Cheerios, called Chlormaquat, which is a pesticide and linked to reproductive and developmental issues. Um, the story got a bit of traction in print media, but there was absolutely no attention paid to how this happened and what to do to remedy the situation. Probably because General Mills pays a lot of money in advertising. Say what you will, but we never get a fair shake at a conversation about MRNA because pharmaceutical companies advertise tirelessly on news. Um, I don't even know what MRNA stands for. Well, I guess I love Cheerios. I guess I'm going to stop eating those. News isn't news. It's wrestling for adults. 
<laughs> I used to say it's Santa Claus for adults. Well, religion was Santa Claus for adults. I love that. News isn't news. It's wrestling for adults. Sir, that is a fucking great joke. Look at you. The funny guy at the water bubbler comes up with some fucking ace level stand up material. I fucking tip my microphone to you, sir or ma'am. All right. Government asking for my face. Hey, Billy, fuck nuggets. Uh, first time writing to the show all the way from Belfast, Ireland. Oh, my God. One of the most hardcore fucking cities I've ever been to in my life. In my life! That fucking place. That fucking place. The, the post-trauma of the troubles. That whole vibe. That fucking wall. The guy that opened the door that looked like Ian McShane at Ulster Hall and I gave him my big American friendly smile and he just looked into my soul and I, the smile immediately washed off my face and I was just like, okay, okay, stop cheesing, There's, stop being so happy and joyful, these people have been through a lot of shit, adjust your fucking stupid happy to be here American attitude. Um, okay, here we go. First time running in from Belfast, Ireland. Basically, I work in the film industry uh, when I am on projects or have one. Uh, oh, basically, I work in the film industry when I'm on projects or have one. But to keep a stable income, I also work full time for a government department in an office on computers. During lockdown and COVID, they gave us work from home kits. And now we have to come into the office one day a week. Um, the security for logging into both the computers at home and the office is a blank card with a chip that has our logins, and all we do is put a password in. However, they are currently rolling out laptops to everyone that will not replace your work from home kit, but will replace the office computers. So what's the problem then? Well, the problem is the new laptops only have one way to sign in, and it's a fucking scan of your face. They are rolling them out to everyone and saying it's a, it is mandatory to have one for when you come into the office. That still means they have a scan of my face, though. People have tried to object to it and have just been forced into setting up one. No, just quit. Quit your fucking job. Unionize and say we're not fucking doing this shit. Regular people, we have got to get our shit together and we have got to push back. I know I sound paranoid. You're not paranoid. They are 100% not going to just use that for fucking that. Um, I don't know what they're up to. I'm not on the ins, but I know enough and have read enough history and lived enough life to not trust fucking anybody. He says, I know I, you don't sound paranoid. You sound smart. You sound informed. But it just doesn't make sense to me why they would make it mandatory for everyone to have a laptop that the only way you can sign into using is your face. I don't want any government department having that, especially when it seems like they are changing the system for no good reason as the computers, computers at home and in the office all work. Sorry for the long message, but this has been fucking getting on my nerves. Thanks so much for the great podcast, stand-up specials, and humbly go fuck yourself. Dude, just say I'm not doing that. Just say I'm not doing that. And then they go, well, you're not working here. Just say, fine. But I don't know what you do after that. I mean, I, it would be nice if everybody just said, yeah, we're not fucking doing that. We're not fucking doing that. Um, yeah, it is just, uh, I, but this is the ups. This is what I'm going to tell, tell all you guys. Like, they have been trying this shit forever. There's been a small group of people that, since the beginning of time, have been trying to control everything. And invariably, they fail because human beings, you know, you can only push us so far and then you just hit a breaking point. And there's always a rebellion. There's always a point where whatever it is, a business, a form of government, a tyrant, they just get spread too thin or they get too fat and fucking lazy and then they fall. And this this will fail also. I don't have this gloom and doom of the future. I feel like a regular person revolution will come at some point if we can just stop yelling at each other um, about fucking everything. I literally, somebody sent me a video today on photosynthesis about a bee and the, the, the sonic sound that the flower puts off and the bee hears it, goes there, takes the nectar out, which changes the sonic sound of the fly, flower, which lets other bees know not to land there because there's no nectar in there yet. Okay. And 
all the comment section was just, and people say there's no God, and atheists and religious freaks just yelling at each other. Can't just sit back, enjoy the video, believe what you believe. I believe in God. I don't believe in God. And just fucking leave it at that and not leave a comment. Nope, they got to go in there. Instagram has to have their bots go in and just say shit about God to get atheists going and all of that shit. I almost chimed in. After I read through it, I was like, what the fuck am I doing? I was going to say, like, you know, you fucking God people love to bring up when they're talking about bees and flowers. But when they're talking about sociopaths and warmongers and all these fucking assholes that are running corporations and poisoning the food supply and putting shit in Cheerios, you know? And then, oh, that's because you're listening to the devil. God made the devil. Why doesn't he just handle that shit? That's his former fucking employee. None of that fucker. There's no, that, that, that caring thing. That you're fucking talking about. You bring it up when we talk about the birdies and the bumblebees. And then when you talk about serial killers and pieces of shit like Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And that's all. They listen to the devil. Is that that the convenient fucking excuse? You don't hold them accountable for anything? I think God is just like us. I think he's an unbelievably flawed. He's just more talented. Um, all right. See, and I took the bait. All right. I got all upset. Uh, dead body positive fatsos. Oh my God. We're going to go down this dead. All right. Hey, Billy, have you seen any videos of that show news articles about the, all right, I'll click. uh, Well, I'm on the, uh, I'm on airplane mode, so I can't click on, I did see the Body positive uh, people who then died. Where a girl, not fat, gives updates on where a handful of these hippos ended up. Spoiler alert. All all dead by 40. Oh, these are body positive people who are fat. Um, Well, here's one thing, okay? As you're calling them all hippos and fatties like I do, maybe if we didn't do that, they wouldn't have to have this body positive. Maybe if we weren't so fucking mean to them. Because fat shaming doesn't seem to work. I think it works on a personal level. That's what I do to myself. Bill, you fucking fat, freckled cunt. I do it all the time. Look at this. Look at this. As I just grab fucking rolls on my side. Um, It works for me. Um, Spoiler. All are dead by 40. It makes me mad, Bill. Boo hoo hoo. Because it's one example of how in the last 20 years, mainstream America has abandoned verifiable logic for hacky emotional driven bullshit. Yeah, I know. And you're going to, you know, and this is where people like they blame political parties and it's actually unfair to Democrats and Republicans on this because what it really is, is it's a bunch of uninformed people talking to each other on the internet. Okay. All of this dumb shit that you're reading now that goes national and goes viral. It used to just stay in the local bar or pub. There was always some fucking guy going on and on when you were at the local watering hole and you listen, hey, hey, he's fucking right, this guy's a hot shit. Or, you know, you'd be down there rolling your eyes, hey, he's on one again. Those people have like fucking, you know, influence on the, inter- in the, on the internet now. I don't know why. So I don't think it's a political ideology and I don't think it's any sort of um, they thing. Like they're, they're trying to divide us like that. I think... We're doing a pretty good job ourselves. Anyways, this person says, make no mistake, this is a woman's thing. Men are not celebrated on magazine covers or TED carpets if they're fat. It's not considered brave if a man lets himself go. Uh, I won't feel bad when the overcorrection comes because the correction is to blame. All right. Well, okay. I get what you're saying there. But you should also, we should also take the time to get upset about things that actually matter. You know what I mean? On a, on a higher level. If you really get down, what are you really mad at? You know? Are you really mad at the depiction of men in that movie Barbie, like I was for like two days before? I was like, am I really mad about a movie about dolls? <laughs> um, I'm guilty of that. Uh, well, that's sad that they're all dead. Um, I think in general, there's just some empathetic people who is just saying maybe you should be nicer to overweight women. I think that that's really the message. And in in the process of that, they get completely lost in it. 
And they, yeah, they definitely overcorrect. Um, but I mean, isn't it enough that they died? Can't you get satisfaction out of that? I don't think you should still be upset by it. And as much as I'm giving you a lecture, I'm really talking to myself about many things that I get upset about that really have nothing to do with anything. You know, it, re- it very rarely is it about what I'm saying. It's really usually has to do with something that happened 40 fucking years ago, which is unfortunately what I'm discovering. All right. And that's it. I got to go do show here in Detroit. I'm going to fucking stretch, um, do my little yoga in my hotel room. Have a salad with balsamic vinaigrette as I slowly cry, dreaming of cheeseburgers I used to eat. All right, that's the podcast, everybody. Go fuck yourselves, and I'll check in on you on Thursday.